Greetings and welcome. My name is Stan Houston, and I'm the executive director, the lead broadcaster for the Christian Entrepreneur Network, and we welcome you to what we call a Teach About. These are a variety of little programs, somewhere between usually 10, 12, up to 20 minutes, kind of like a TED Talk, in which we try and take one topic and see if we can help you do what we want to have happen on the Christian Entrepreneur Network. And that is through our podcasts, our radio program, through our teachabouts, through our coaching experiences, through our personal coaching and consulting, through uh, our conferences around the country, and perhaps around the world. We want to help you as a Christian entrepreneur in the marketplace to really become fully alive and uh, live fully alive, fully alive in Jesus, to uh, seek a good life, to flourish to build a great business, and to expand your brand and make your true and lasting mark in the marketplace for the common good and to the glory of God. We want that to happen. And so uh, this is just one of our many teaching lessons that hopefully will help you do just that. It was many years ago, I still kind of wince when I do that or think about it or remind myself of it like I'm doing right now, but uh, here's my story. I had done quite well. After graduating from college, uh, I uh, had become a teacher, and I was very good at that. I worked extremely hard to be a talented teacher, and that was very hard for me because I'm a hopeless introvert. But learning how to speak in public and teach and perform and become a, a, a little bit of a practice speaker as well as a good teacher, I was very happy, doing well. My wife, I had married way above me, Karen, wonderful woman, very talented, had just been invited to be uh, on the management team, perhaps the new management team for a major uh, organization. And so there we were, and we had two small children, we had a home, uh, life seemed to be quite good. But then we were challenged by our pastor and mentor and before we knew it, it seemed, we had decided to uh, quit our jobs, to sell our house, to sell a small business, and go on in the adventure of being Christian missionaries, of being international radio broadcast missionaries with an organization called Transworld Radio. We did that for over 10 years. Uh, in Latin America, the Caribbean, and Europe, not only doing programs all around the world, but also actually coaching and teaching other people so they could be international broadcasters. My wife was uh, an incredible business manager, hospitality, and together we, we were a good team. Raised our own support, uh, made it our own kind of personal mission to do all kinds of things, even outside of our, quote, work. But then something happened. Uh, it went wrong. It went poorly. And before uh, it was all done, we were back in the United States, and there we were. And one night, my wife looked at me after we were doing the dishes together after a very difficult day as I was looking for a job, and she had just found a job. She said, this is exactly what I was hoping for when I married you 20 years ago. I was hoping that after 20 years of marriage, we would have no house, no car, no job, no money, broken a kid in college. That's exactly what I was hoping for. And of course, then her sarcasm uh, and tears turned to deep, deep sobs. And she left the apartment. I still remember that night. I'm remembering it quite well right now. Now, that didn't mean everything got better right away, because it didn't. And that didn't mean that everything has gone well since then. No, we've had many challenges and still have many challenges. Life is always difficult. As we oftentimes say, adversity is part of the plan. Sometimes that where we that's where we learn some of the greatest lessons. And that was part of that. I took stock of myself and I said, something went wrong. Uh, well, and please, we hadn't done anything wrong. I hadn't, uh, you know, uh, had an affair with a colleague. We hadn't embezzled any money. Uh, none of those usual career-wrecking stupidity mistakes, which happen all the time. No, it's just simply that uh, it hadn't worked out. It had crashed. It wasn't working due to a variety of things, and we just knew we couldn't continue, and so it all came apart. And now we have to start all over again. 
uh, obviously at a little more of an advanced age than most people are when they start over again. I said, what did I have to learn? And so what I did is I decided to study. And I went out and I was doing any kind of job I could. You know, I, I was working for $5 an hour sometimes, doing any kind of job I could, looking for any kind of job I could, but in the meantime, I was always reading and listening to audio programs and watching videos. I said, I'm going to learn everything I can about personal development, personal motivation, true success, business success. And I think it's no exaggeration to say that I went through a, probably a thousand books or tapes or uh, whatever those things are that we seemingly use. And I learned a lot, a lot. And then I talked to people and then I visited with people. And after all that, I started to do uh, business performance coaching. I'd learned a lot about marketing as a missionary. I learned a lot about communication as a broadcaster. And with that put together, I found myself in a rather heavy demand after some good recommendations as a business performance coach, uh, particularly around the Minneapolis-St. Paul area in the state of Minnesota in the USA. Did very well, up and down, back and forth, but we did very well. And uh, we did that for many, many years, and in some cases we still do that. But what I then discovered is that in all of that searching, what really made the difference was the fact that about 25 years ago, after all of that studying, I discovered that the true secret of success was not found in any of those books by all of the gurus. The true secret of success was found in a little leadership letter by Saint Entrepreneur. That's right, Saint Paul, who was an entrepreneur, who was a business leader, who uh, actually financed his missionary work by his business, his enterprise. Saint Entrepreneur wrote a leadership letter while he was in prison to a group of colleagues and friends in the city of Philippi. And so we have this little letter called the letter to the Philippians. And I began to look through it. And even though it is written from jail, it is a story of joy. Uh, you just feel it. Optimism, powerful optimism. Though he's in jail and knows that he, he might die and he might die soon. This was what he said. And in that letter, I found the secrets to life and business success in four easy, <laughs> not easy, but easy to understand steps. And we call this now the diamond. You see, a diamond is a piece of coal under incredible pressure for a long, long time. You got that? A diamond is a piece of coal under incredible pressure for a long, long time. And that's one of the first things we need to know about life. If we want to be a diamond, there's a price and a cost to be paid. And we're not done yet. Then uh, some master craftsman has to take that diamond and cut it and chop it and knock off the rough edges and then polish it and shine it. So if you're going to be a diamond, it's going to take something out of you in order to put something beautiful in you. And so we take these four steps and we say, this is the diamond. This is the diamond deal. That's how we frame it. This is the diamond deal for how you will be successful in your life and your business as a Christian entrepreneur. And so uh, I would encourage you to go back and read the book again, but do so after just taking a few minutes now to listen to what it's all about. What I learned as we went through that study. Chapter one begins. I give thanks upon every remembrance of you. Aren't those wonderful words? I give thanks upon every remembrance of you. Have you ever said that to somebody? Has anyone ever said that to you? You know, every time I think about you, I'm thankful. Ever said that to a customer? Ever said that to a colleague? Ever said that to just a friend? Someone you care deeply about? You know what? I am so thankful for you. 
I'm grateful for you. St. Paul said, I give thanks upon every remembrance of you. I said, wow. The first step in being successful is to be thankful. Even though you're in jail, even though you're broke, even though it's going badly for you, even though the future doesn't look good, you will have troubles, but count it all joy. And I also learned that a thankful and grateful heart is seldom a fearful heart. And overcoming fear is the biggest obstacle to our success. That is true. The Bible says, don't be afraid hundreds of times. Don't be fearful. Don't be afraid. And a thankful and grateful heart is seldom a fearful heart. Learn to say thank you. I actually had to challenge one spiritual leader one time. I said, you know what? I seldom hear you say thank you. You give a lot of orders and you give a lot of sermons and you give a lot of good stuff. But I seldom hear you say thank you. Have you ever used the word grateful? Think about that. From now on, I would encourage you to use the word thankful and grateful a lot because the first secret of success that I learned is to be thankful, to have an attitude of gratitude that no matter what, you say thanks. Easy to do? Oh, easy to say, difficult to do. Ask God to give you the grace to have a thankful and grateful heart and to have a grateful spirit. Start there. Chapter 2, a great theological little treatise that very simply says this, Jesus was at the top of the pyramid and he went right to the bottom to serve you. He gave it all up to become a man of service. And you know why? Because he wanted to demonstrate to you and to I that the second key to success is service. You have one entitlement in life. I'm entitled to free health care. I'm entitled to this. I have a right to this. As one mentor finally helped me understand, Stan, you have one right and one entitlement in life. Only one right and only one entitlement. You are entitled to serve others. That's what you are entitled to do. That's what you are made for. That's how you will be successful. I remember after a seminar, one guy kind of challenged me and said, hey, I hear all this servant stuff, but let me tell you, I've got a life and a business and a family to support. Uh, I have to serve myself. Well, gently I kind of smiled and said, okay, but remember, then you might be the only customer you ever get. We are called to serve others. And what I found out is most people don't have a clue about that and they don't know who they're called to serve. Most businesses still can't tell you who they're called to serve and how they're called to do it. They've got a product, they've got a service, they've got an experience, they've got all kinds of good stuff that they want to sell and bring into the marketplace, but they still can't figure out who they're called to serve and that they are truly there not to make money in the marketplace, they are called there to serve in the marketplace and take the risk that if you serve well, you will get paid well. I will challenge you. Take time to identify who right now, because it can change. In fact, it may change every six months to a year. Every business should figure out who they're called to serve right now and what those people need and how we can help them. How can we serve our people in the next six months even better, knowing the things that are going on in the lives, the marketplace, how can we do that? You are called to serve others. Figure that out. I was told that one college a number of years ago actually would not let the seniors graduate unless they actually wrote a service charter. There they were, 22, 23 years of age, and they made them sit down and write their service charter. At this stage in my life, these are the people I am called to serve, and I'm called to serve in this way. And then they had to make a public presentation of that to a group of their peers and to their professors. Wow! 
I wonder if we should take that old idea and make it brand new. Just let that sit on your head for a while. Chapter 3. Forget what's behind, Stan. St. Paul says, hey, great achievements, great failure. Forget it. <laughs> great failures, great achievements. Forget what is behind. Press toward the mark of God's high calling. Press toward the mark of God's high calling. Stan, figure out the high calling. <laughs> Forget what's behind. What's the future high calling? Figure that out. That'd be good for you to do that. And press on. You know why? Because as soon as you do, the pressure will be on. Men and women who find out who they are, what they are called to do, what service they are supposed to bring into the world, the enemy of our souls and of our very civilization will go after you and pressure you. Because once you decide to press on toward God's high calling, and once you decide to press on toward making your mark, the resistance starts, the pressure will be on, and you better be ready for it. So press on. And he said this, mark. A mark is a goal. 3% of the population live with goal-directedness in mind. They actually think about and plan. The world steps aside for the man or woman who knows who they are, where they're going, and they have a plan to achieve that. Only 3% of the population live that way. I had never understood that before. I just kind of lived well from day to day, had a few plans, but not one of the three. What's the marks you are to make? Number two, trademark. Yeah, a trademark. Everybody has a trademark. You've been made distinct and different. In effect, what's your trademark? You walk into the marketplace and you're different. There is no competition to you because you are a unique trademark in the marketplace. There's no one who does it like you do it, as good as you do it, quite as well as you do it. What's your trademark? I oftentimes challenge my clients to actually go to a designer like my friend Scott and invest in a personal trademark. Yes, tell your story and ask for a slogan or logo for you, for your business. It's your trademark. Put that on your business card, not the company logo, you. Number three, making your mark means you made a difference. When we make our mark, it's not a blur, it's not a scratch, it's not a smudge, it's a mark. Something changed, something is different, something is better, something was fixed. Because you were there, there is better. What mark are you called to make? St. Paul says, number three, forget what is behind, find the high calling, set your goals, mark. Get your trademark. Mark. Decide the difference you are called to make. Do it. Make your mark. Number four. And then, St. Paul says, you know what? There's a lot of good stuff out there. Whatsoever is noble and pure and good and beautiful and lovely, think about those things. Fill your mind with good stuff. Read, think, pray, sing, fellowship continually. As Jesus would say, what's inside of you is going to come out of you. You are what you think about. You are what you think about a lot. Your inside has to go public on the outside. That's truly going public. But you've got to take time to think about it to do good things. There we go. Let me tell you this. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Be thankful and grateful. Figure out who you're called to serve. Forget what is behind. Press toward the three marks. Find the high calling. Fill your mind with good things. And the rest is simply detail. And we'll help you do the details. Because there's a lot of them. There's a lot of tips and techniques and things you can learn. But first learn the diamond. The diamond. And right inside the diamond is the very spirit of Jesus.
That's what makes it shine. That's what keeps it tough. That's what keeps it on course. That, my friends, is the Christian Entrepreneur Network Diamond Deal. And we encourage you to think about that. If you want to be successful in life, do the diamond. Chapter 1, Chapter 2, Chapter 3, Chapter 4. And I believe that that becomes a part of your heart, mind, and spirit. Uh, things will go better for all of us. Just let this sit on your head for a while. Take it to your heart. Put it into action. And uh, let me know. We would appreciate if this has been helpful to you to let us know. StanHouston at gmail.com. StanHouston at gmail.com. This is complimentary, but uh, if you can help us in the work we do, we'd be grateful. www.tcnglobal.org. That will show you more of our story. But if you would be glad to help us, tcenglobal.org <laughs> slash contribute we would be grateful. We would be very grateful. Well, that's my timer telling me that my time is up. But I'm also looking forward to hearing from you as to how we can continue past the timer and actually have a conversation that might even count and change the world. Best in blessings. God bless us all, everyone. And bye for now.